Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's off my build, we have a fantastic arc blind theme setup that works great when being used in heavily crowded areas and also most endgame content. Blinding debuffs are amazing in endgame content with how easily they can be triggered, but seeing players use them in most content is quite rare. For this, I have created a setup just for the hunters to where you can blind as much as you like while also being able to rain grenades back to back to keep the flow of the build going. It's simply, by using Jolt and Blind Effects, you can stomp most tough encounters on Legend to Master content, for example, by simply keeping your weapon primed at all times, and all this will be done via the Centrifuge and Shinobi's Vow Azotic. I'm going to show you why sleeping on blind debuffs are a bad thing for the soul, so enjoy. To start, you're going to want to have Lethal Current, where after dodging, your next melee attack has increased range, jolts targets, and creates an aftershock. Being jolted while doing this can also blind them. Then you want Tempest Strike where sliding and activating your charge melee ability unleashes a devastating uppercut attack. To get the theme of the build going, I decided to enhance the melee section for Tempest Strike to allow us to safely melee from distance and also make it easier for us to become jolted and blind quickly. Flow state is optional here because of the flexibility of the aspect, but Tempest Strike works well in a lot of content no matter what you face. So sadly, there isn't a grenade based aspect for the selected as this would really help out refine the build. For fragments, we have spark of beacons where while amplified, your arc special weapon thunder blows create a blinding effect. Spark of brilliance, where defeating a blinded target with precision damage creates blinding explosion. Spark of shock, where your arc grenade jolt targets. And spark of irons, where defeating jolt targets creates iron traces. A lot of these fragments you use here are fantastic for the standard run on the mill builds you may be going for, such as Spark of Shock and Ions. However, when getting creative, both Spark of Beacons and Brilliance are two fragments that are rare to see out in public, but are very powerful with the right setup. As we are using Centrifuge Exotic AR that can blind at max power, these fragments are more designed for special weapons that can either hit precision hit or are just special in name. This means in practice that you can have one precision special weapon to make use of both fragments, while also having another special weapon that can make use of the beacons on its own. This makes it easier for players to play around and see what combos best fit what and allow you to experiment on weapons that you may have never really thought about for this instance. For the mods and stats section, having resilience and discipline would be the smart move to do on your end, although intellect and strength stat don't need to be maxed out fully. Discipline will be at tier 7, but actually will be at tier 10 because of the Fond of Focus mod, granting us an extra plus 30 towards our stats. I would recommend you do the same, as this is easy to achieve for a lot of players, and you don't need to heavily invest into getting good armor with good armor spike rolls just for this cause alone. With the stats at tier 10 and Sparkle Ions fragments combined, you can have relatively fast cooldown rate for the grenade being used here, which is these skip grenades. These grenades on their own aren't that great compared to others, but once you add on Shinobi's Vow to the mix, you can get some awesome effects. For example, you can get two skip grenades instead of one, and your drones from the grenades itself can get you back 4.2% energy for each drone that hits. On top of this, we also have the Lightning Strikes Twice Seasonal mod that will also further enhance these areas further. In short, your discipline stat is fully packed to bring you the best short effects that your subclass can offer. Resilience at tier 7 to 10 would also be useful here as well to make sure you survive much longer in the more tougher content. And then of course both intellect and strength fall down to user preference in terms of how often you tend to use your abilities. Intellect at tier 6 does allow you to gather super energy faster when combining this with Ash as its mod, while strength at tier 4 can be enhanced so you can use your charge mini more often. Although with Ion Traders on hand, this should make this area a bit more easier to manage without mods. This would then leave you room to expand on the additional armor charge mods. So, charged up will expand your armor charges by plus one. Then, having Arc Siphon, Firepower, and Reaper mod will allow us to create orbs of power while on the go. We also have the Elemental Charge mod that will grant us an armor charge upon collecting the Ion Trace, but only by chance. And to top this off, we then have the Powerful Attraction mod to where using our class ability will put in orbs of power within our radius. All of these will help for our times 2 Arc Weapon Surge mod for a constant 17% weapon damage buff, and then Time Dilation mod will extend the duration of all time-based mods to an extra 5 seconds. 
If you're using the Arc Heavy Weapon this season, then don't forget to add on the Heavy Ammo Finder mod and the Arc Reserves mod to make your life a bit more easier. Now, lastly, the weapons being used, we have the Centrifuge Exotic AR from the Season Pass, as well a very simple but amazing mechanic that allows us to control the field in one single burst. Overcharging the weapon will trigger an explosion and blind debuff until it defeat a target, and this here makes using these Balka Beacons a bit more redundant with how powerful this is. However, if you go for an all blind build like shown, then the following fragments aren't that useless as you may think. The weapon is great against anything minor wise as they are easier to defeat, and then using your drop grenades to finish helps with dealing with crowded rooms a lot more effectively. There is only one other exotic that can blind as well, which is the Queen's Breaker, but this isn't an exotic that many people would want to use. Our secondary is the Blasphemer Slug Shotgun, and I chose this weapon because slug shotguns have a higher crit multiplier, and it also comes with Osmosis. Osmosis is the key perk here, as any weapon that has the perk can turn arc after a grenade has been used. Now, Osmosis and the following allows your crits to be even more deadlier when Spark of Beacons is active, since it's a lot more easier to land your shots. Now, this only works for a special weapon because of the fragment you are using, and if you don't have a weapon like this here with Centrifuge, then swapping your loadout would be recommended. Cold Heart is a good replacement choice, as this weapon can take special ammo, can make use of the fragments, gives you I want traces, and also gets stronger the longer it stays on a target. On the other hand, having Lobbox C with Osmosis for the build is pretty easy to do, as a lot of players can get the following from World Drops or Banshee, and this then frees up your Arc Special to whatever you like. Now, on to the conclusion. This build is similar to the Arc Titan build I did a while back that utilised the insurmountable skull front to trigger non-stop Arc explosions and blind effects upon impact. And to be honest, although the build couldn't be used in the more higher level content, it did provide just enough survivability to where its worth would allow it to shine in certain moments. This build here is just like that, except it's not held down by the simple belief that you can't use an ink in content. This build here makes full use of your heavily enhanced grenades that can come back to you in full energy if it simply contacts a target. From this here, this will give you a number of buffs with Jolt being the main one that will allow our centrifuge to really tear it up at max. Since this weapon has been released, I have noticed just how effective this max form can be against a wide group of enemies as just one precision kill can blind the following targets within your area for a good number of duration. To further expand how good this one debuff can be, I expanded on this towards our charge melee and a secondary weapon with osmosis on it to really pull this in further. With just these three alone, you can trigger a blind effect as long as you are amplified through three different methods, and a grenade will be key to creating this effect, although we aren't using blinded grenades here. I've always seen blind debuffs to be a pretty powerful ability that not many people seem to utilise within the build, and Centrifuge is one of those weapons that are not terrible, but is also not amazing. It's got a sweet spot that many players can lean into and allow freedom to move about when things get bad. Now that such a weapon exists with a much bigger radius compared to using the Spark of Beacons fragment, which has a slightly smaller radius to its effect, it makes dealing with tougher enemies within endgame and GMs a lot more interesting. It has the flexibility to allow players to use this in endgame content as the heavy and special is optional to use up, while the primary can say how it is, and the mods don't require seasonal artifact mods to make it function as well, although it does help out here and there. It's pretty much a lock and key build that anyone can use no matter the content, and the only issue that comes up for the build is running out grenade energy fast if you overdo it, and also using your special weapon too much. Of course, this isn't so much of an issue if you just swap out your weapons every now and then, and then just monitor your progress. Overall, if you watched my last blind build and you enjoyed that type of content and the idea behind it, then you'll definitely love something similar that can be used in the high end content with a bit more ease. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. If you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.